As a business owner, do you ever wonder if your business ever closes early when you aren't there? Or if it opened on time this morning? Stop wondering. With smarter business security powered by Alarm.com, get alerts sent directly to your phone when your business opens and closes. An all-in-one service that helps you understand who is coming and going in one store or across all your store locations. Know everything that's happening at your business with smarter business security powered by Alarm.com. See how by visiting Alarm.com slash business today. Blog Talk Radio. Caution. The tea is hot. Blow it off first, okay? Dish and tea with Big Meech. Hello, hello, hello. It's another glorious day, my tea sippers, and you know what time it is. I hope you have all of your comfort together because it's time to dish the tea. And you're dishing the tea, darlings. Ha! With Big Meech. Thank <laughs> you. 
United States and across the globe. For those of you who can hear the sound of my voice in Germany and Italy and the Caribbean islands, oh, it is another glorious Wednesday, my tea sippers, and you know what time it is. So, honey, I know that you have all of your covers together because, darling, it's time to dish tea, and you're dishing the tea, darling. <laughs> With Big Meech. What's going on, people? Babies, 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 babies. Okay, it's been a very interesting last seven days. Honey, we are only into the second Wednesday of 2015. And already, you know, we got folks trying to come out of a bag and shit. Honey, I'm telling you, God knows what God is doing with God, with God all by God's self, and did not allow me to be God. <laughs> Because, child, I'm telling you, the God on his truth, honey, there are some things that's going down, honey, that, you know, I'm not necessarily liking, okay? And it's okay, you know, everything is not meant to be liked by everybody. However, 
you know, at the same time, there just seems to be just this little shift in in uh, in the world and carry it on. So I just got to keep my eyes open, honey, and stand steadfast until what's going on. So having said all that, uh, you know, uh, it's very productive for me right now. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we're working on the second book, Revelations, Affirmations, and Confirmations. It is soon to be released, and it's going to be a birthday gift to myself so that we can get you guys out there. And I hope you support this one like you did the first one. And uh, we will be putting it together in packets and carrying on so that you can have what you need to have for it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay. Also, we're still working on wanting to make uh, No Time for the for the Pain a reality here in the Atlanta area. So we have a couple of fundraisers that's, that we are enacting. The first one is uh, where you can buy memorabilia or, or you know, merchandise that will um, – uh, brandish our logo on it. You know, the wonderful, wonderful art piece, honey, uh, created by Peter Jackson of Five More Artists Detroit. And so we're going to have T-shirts and coffee mugs or tea mugs, as I like to call them, an 11 by 17 print of the artwork. And also for those of you who like ceramic tiles, we have the uh, six by eight ceramic tile piece of the work. Each item is going for twenty dollars each plus five dollars shipping and handling. Uh, the shirts are going from sizes small to four X. If you need a size of uh, those sizes bigger, larger than the four X, just let me know, and uh, we will make sure to accommodate you. There will be a slightly higher charge for the for the larger sizes. Um, the 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 plus plus sizes, if you will, but it's all good and it's wonderful. Okay. So for more information on how you can contribute and get your uh, your your artwork, just feel free to call 248-688-5178. That's 248-688-5178. You are just so glad, just grand and glorious for allowing us to do this because we, we've got to get 50K in the kitty children. 50K, okay? So having said that, that's where our goal is, and I'm hoping that you come on through and, and give us a, a hand with that. All right? Now, um, we are embarking on a number of things this year. You know, everything is happening so rapidly right about now. Uh, as you all know, this weekend is MLK weekend. For those of you coming down here to Atlanta, we have a couple of things and a and, and few things going on. Um, I'm going to do a shout out because my, one of my children, honey, her birthday is Friday, so. Yay! Oh, my Lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that Kier is in the background, honey. Okay, making all this noise because this child is, is early 20s, honey. We'll be 24 on Friday, so that Yay! is Absolutely that way. <laughs> also, happy anniversary goes out to Grizzly. I'm going to call him that so that he can stay anonymous somewhere. He knows who he is. Uh, this is his second anniversary, so hot diggity boom for that. Also, uh, we have a, a number of things that, that will be going on uh, this weekend. Uh, down here in Atlanta. So for more information about uh, MLK Weekend, just Google it, and you'll find out what's happening and, and carry it on, carry it on. So say la vie. For those of you who are just tuning in or want to come in on the conversation, we are having another Don't Come Out of a Bag. This is the first one for 2015, honey. So if you want to be my co-host, please feel free to give us a call at 347-205-9183. That's 347-205-9183. Press the number one. Let's press it one time, honey. You will hear the caller say, honey, you are in the call. That lets me know that you have something to talk about. And I will come to you at the appropriate time, honey. Um, Don't come out of a bag for those of you who may not know the concept. 
this is the time where we could talk about any and everything that is on your mind. I mean, I don't care what it is. We could talk. We can talk, okay? But here's the caveat. If you come in here and want to act like you're about to come out of a bag or you try to come out of a bag on me, baby, I'm coming out of a bigger bag. You understand? Even if it means just hanging up on you, child, I will do it gladly and will make no qualms about it, okay? <laughs> so just consider yourselves warm and here comes this damn dry-ass cough again. <clears throat> oh, y'all, excuse me. Now, um, for everything else, my darlings, that there is that. I do have a few things that I will be presenting to you that I would love to have your discussion on. Uh, and your input, rather. So uh, any and everything that's on your mind, or, or if you want to choose uh, to talk, speak on one of the topics that is on my mind, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, the tea room is open, so just uh, if you're going to hang out with me over here, just make sure that you guys create a profile page, and then we'll go from there. That way you're able to interact. Otherwise, you'll just be over there in the side and say guest and a number, and you'll be able to read and to and to partake of what's going on, but you won't be able to participate. So, uh, yeah. And having said that, honey, just remember that when you're over here in the tea room that this is the written word, the written word. You're not hearing it. You're not seeing the folks in the video hair jerking or pooching their lips or eating Cheetos and things of that nature. So, Aha. So um, that there is that. So when you want to come on in, um, just be mindful, honey, that um, you may think someone is trying to come out of a bag on you or try to neck roll you or finger snap you or whatever, and that may not necessarily be the case. So please, when you're over here, dish your tea responsibly. Understand that it's okay to disagree. Just don't be disagreeable, okay? So uh, that there was that. And having said that, dishing tea with big meat is for mature audiences, and the language and or subject matters that you hear on this program are not intended for children or anyone who is not mature or responsible enough to handle the situations at hand. So your listening discretion is advised. I will repeat, dishing tea with big meat is for mature audiences, and the languages and or subject matters that you hear on this program are not intended for children or anyone who is not mature or responsible enough to handle the situation or the programming at this time. So your listening discretion is advised. Now is the time for you to take Dora, uh, take the kids into the other room so they can watch Dora and SpongeBob and Burton Ernie and all of those other good things, honey, because here is where the grown and sexy becomes the seasoned and sophisticated, okay? <laughs> yes, honey, yeah, the seasoned and sophisticated, honey. I make no excuses for my mouth, honey. I do have a potty mouth, and, um, hell, I'll be 45 on March 4th or so about two months or less. I will be 45 years young, okay? And that there, honey, I've earned the right to every 3, 4, 5, 17, 54, 128 letter and or syllable word that comes out of my mouth. So if you can think you can supercalifragilisticexpialidocious me all day, use a lie because I'm going to come back right back with you, okay? <laughs> and we're going to get down and dirty. So if this is something that you cannot handle or stomach, is no offense if you find yourself having to bow out. I would rather you do it early, and uh, we will catch you on the flip side, honey, and I would be like, uh, you know, thank you for your support versus you getting into the show and thinking you can handle it, and then I'm, I'm doing a little too much for you. So please be mindful of that, okay? Because none of you bitches will come to me at the Kroger, at the Piggly Wiggly, at the Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Wherever I am, you will not come up to me and tell me, oh, big me, it was because of you that I got in trouble or whatever, because I'm not standing for it. I will not stand for it at all, and you ain't going to knock me down about it either. So 
having said that, um, yeah, just consider yourselves warned. So I think that's all of my special announcements that we have right now. No, I'm going to go ahead and shout this out, too. Uh, Big Boy Pride is in registration season. You do know that uh, the dates this year are, uh, it's April 3rd through the 6th. Okay, that first weekend in April. So uh, make sure that you go to bigboypride.com for more information on your registration and carrying on this year. The color is green. Ah, uh, yes, because sage green is one of my favorite colors. So uh, that there is that. So now what I'm going to do here, uh, let me take a, a little commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to go to the phone lines and see what's on your mind on this first Don't Come Out of the Bag, honey. Ha. And I titled today's show, What Do you, What Bag Did You Think You Coming Out of Today? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. An educator, an entrepreneur, a poet, an artist. Sharon Williams Dean is Art by Sold. Creating beautifully exquisite artwork for your home, business, gifts, or any special occasion. For more information, contact Art by Sold at 313 313- 740-4904 or visit the gallery at www.artbysode.com That's www.artbysode.com Dishing Tea Entertainment Deliciously exposing your palate to a cornucopia of rainbow colored dreams and a black and white reality while cultivating the masses through a delicate blend of stage, screen, television, radio, print, and social media initiatives. For more information about Dishing Tea Entertainment, call Big Meech at 404-914-5610 or visit www.dishingtea.com. Double Exposure Media Relations is a full-service public relations, marketing, and artist development firm specializing in urban culture and lifestyle. Spearheaded by the Henry Hingers of hip-hop, Mr. Angelo Ellaby, Double Exposure serves to educate its clients about the dollars and cents of the music industry. For more information about Double Exposure Media Relations, call 201-224-6510. 201-224-6510. Double Exposure Media Relations. The Big Brothers Network. Yeah, men of color, men of size. The Big Brothers Network was created to celebrate the larger man of color and those who admire him. We intend to promote a positive self-image within our community and the mainstream population. Our goal is to embrace our differences, to inspire self-love, and increase camaraderie through positive, brotherly interactions. We intend to accomplish these goals through the BBN magazine, local and national events, and networking forums. For more information or to catch the latest copy of the BBN magazine, please go to www.bigbrothersnetwork.com. That's www.bigbrothersbrothasnetwork.com. The Big Brothers Network, men of color, men of size.
If you're just tuning in, honey, I want to thank you for your love, your honor, your support, and your patronage right here. We are in another, uh, our first installment, rather, of 2015 of Don't Come Out of a Bag, honey. Well, you are my co-host, child. The rules are just as simple as this. Whatever is on your mind, I don't care what it is, we can talk about any and everything right here, right now, but. If you decide to come out of a bag on me, trust truly, honey, I'm coming out of a bigger bag on you. Okay? Okay? Mm. Right here with Dishing Tea Child, everybody's voice, if you're on this side of creation still, everybody's voice deserves to be heard. Now, we don't necessarily have to agree with that voice, but it, it deserves and has the birthright of being heard. So right here, honey, this is that platform. But just remember, if you come out of a bag on me, I'm coming right back out of a bigger bag on you, okay? Okay, now let's get into this thing, honey. Now, like I said, 
There are a few things that have been on my mind, and we are only in 14 days of the new year. And, child, there's been some things that have just transpired that I think is absolutely astronomical. Uh, The first thing that's on my mind is, I don't know if you guys have heard this, there's a new reality television show that's coming on the air. I forget what network it is. It's either We or Oxygen or or something. And the premise of this show, well, no, the, the title of it is called My Husband is Not Gay. Yeah, you heard me. My husband is not gay. Okay. Now, the whole idea from what I'm understanding of this particular show is that we will be going into the lives of these people, honey, who decided to have to marry females, and they're very loud and open with the fact that they have an attraction for men. Now, supposedly, they have not acted or interacted on these particular urges, and I think that may not be all the way true. If I remember correctly, I thought I saw uh one of the couples in a preview that um uh, um she was in unfaithful to him or, or whatever the case is and uh he went out and did something or another, you know, and, and went with and had relations with the dude or whatever the case is. Now, that part may not be as fascinating. But here's the thing. There's a petition, there's an online petition going on to where a lot of the gay rights groups and, and activists, want, they want to stop this particular show from coming on the air because they figure that it's sending out the wrong message that being gay is something that you can pray away, you know, or that it is promoting um, uh, the whole uh, ex-gay movement and things. So I don't know. Looking at the clip of this, my whole thing is how all of these damn reality shows are are fit to be tied anyway. So I'm curious to hear what you have to say about that particular show. Would you watch it? Is that something you would watch? You know, I don't know, child, if I would watch some stupid shit like this because my whole thing is this. I'm one who thoroughly believes that love is love and love opens and grows and carrying on. And it is innate. You cannot help who you are attracted to, okay? But what you can help is your reaction to that feeling, okay? So that there is where a lot of this lies for me, because for those who claim it to be bi-attractional, uh, or at least in a, in these particular marriages and things of that nature, you have a, a woman and you're you telling her that you still are attracted to men, that's heavy. That there is heavy. I, I, I don't even know how the premise of this show is going to be. So that there is that. So here's another thing that I have on my mind. I, I question is freedom of speech. For real? Interesting. Here in Atlanta, just over the last few days, we've had uh, the the fire chief was fired because he had wrote a book that expressed his own religious views on homoattractionality. Okay? Now, according to what's been going on down here, a lot of folks feel as though he should not have written the book because of the language and stuff that's used up in the book to describe gays and and all of that. And I'm like, that's not necessarily true. You know, um, if we were to gather at someone's home or whatever the case may be, the gathering is still there. Now, if this is a a homework study group or whatever, then then nobody's coming there to to get the goods on somebody and this that and the other. We're trying to study to get our grades and all of that. So that there has been something that has been on the forefront of my mind because as I'm watching again these little reality shows and I'm only seeing most of them from the clips that they've shown. <laughs> Excuse me, it just seems as though uh folks are getting a little nervous and the the heteroattractional culture is 
excuse me, acting as if they want to throw, wipe their hands of it and carry it on and not want to deal with the fact that it's in your face. It's right here. You cannot deny it. I don't care how butch this child put on his walk or whatever. You know, there's something about him that's going to be clockable. You know. So uh, I'm interested and curious to hear what you have to say about that. Uh, here is something that I'm sure would get the ball rolling. We talked about this before with Michigan. However, um, it's Virginia. When you guys go back and read this or something, if you, if you happen to go into the log and happen to read up on today's show, I've got to go in there and edit that because I put in in my writings in Vermont. It's not Vermont. It is Virginia. Okay, and what it seems what seems to be going on here is that they're similar to what Michigan did, and, and I don't know how in the hell Michigan, y'all let them do that shit, uh, but they always say that they're putting out flyers and this, that, and the third. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, it just, it, it, it takes me into a whole nother, level of this thing, and I'm like, okay, should the police, I mean, the fire chief been fired because of his personal views on religion and carrying on, and that, you know, when did he have time to go to church, you know, as far as I'm concerned, because you're working 12-hour shifts or whatever, you know, and get you there to the service, and it's boring, and you end up falling asleep. That's not necessarily cute, you know, but, uh, um, it's just very interesting that states are now wanting to pull together and go into this whole legalized discrimination and telling you that you can't be serviced because your uh, your life and how you're living your life and the culture that you're wrapped up in does not um, uh, it doesn't have any any substance to it or any fiber to it or whatever, you know. And that that's very interesting, very very interesting. This bill is saying that uh, they're going to stop you from medical treatment and carrying on under that whole thing of that this is offensive to my uh, what the, uh, oh damn it I, I just lost my train of thought. But anyway, that is going to be very very interesting. Okay, very interesting. Thing, this debate here. Um, so, what do you do? Should he been fired? Should he have been left to fend for himself, or whatever? Should 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 the um, should the mayor have gotten around him and rallied and things so that we can have a better police presence and and all of that? I I don't think he should have fired him. Maybe suspend him a couple of days, but not fire him. You know. So. That seems to be my contention with that. My fourth um, point of, of of discussion, how many of you guys knew that George Zimmerman had got arrested again just a few days ago? Let me see your hands. <laughs> yes, this old fucker done got arrested yet again, and guess what? It was assault with the with the deadly weapon, honey. He was brandishing a gun with him, and now he got his ass in trouble again by um, uh, having the gun and this and the other. I didn't go into all the details of why he was arrested and all this jazz, but it just goes to show that you know part of this was in his nature when he sat up there and did all that with Trevon. Um, um, uh, Trayvon, rather. So, I, you know, he got arrested again. What are your thoughts on that? Okay. And then the last two things go hand in hand. It's MLK weekend, as I said before. First off, honey, let me get into your business for a minute. What you got planned for the MLK weekend? Since it's now this groovy, groovy, groovy holiday, you know, I just think black folks just wanted a reason not to go to damn work. <laughs> For those who didn't have to, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that there is the breaks. 
on that. If you're going to go come down here, honey, and spend all your little rent money and things, I encourage you to come have a good time. Just make sure your responsibilities are in order. Okay, and the second one tends to go hand in hand with that. The King Children. We got Bernice, Dexter, and uh, Adam the Third. Okay. Uh, what seems to be the problem is that why is it that it appears that every time we come close to his birthday or some kind of celebration to honor his accomplishments and achievements, it seems as though his children end up into this old bitter dispute. Okay, the question that I have, uh, well, what are your thoughts about them going up against their father in the public like that? And then number two, you know, if they if he was to whoop their asses, <laughs> you know, because they sound like they need one, if he could just come back from the grave and just whoop those asses, that would be absolutely love. Okay, <laughs> but according to the news reports and everything, um, Dexter wanted. To do, I forgot what he said. Dexter wanted, um, um, the child wanted to do with with the with the uh, with the 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 heirlooms and stuff. But I'm not exactly sure why they felt the need that they want to sell it. It's very difficult at the moment, and 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 it's so it's such a challenge to have the your children now, who should have been leaders and stepping up into that plate to you know to backpedal and what appears to be some kind of fight over materialistic goods. It's, just, it's not a good look on the family at all. Okay, so those are my thoughts. What are yours? <laughs> what are yours? Okay, hold on. Let me go see what's happening. All right. Okay, y'all don't have nothing for me right now? All right, then let me do this because I've got to get some water because this cough is trying to, to, to get on me. Let, oh, yeah, let me take care of this, and I'll be right back. Come on. If you are looking for irresistible, breathtaking art, you've come to the right place. At Sherwood Forest Art, we carry a large selection of paintings, masks, figurines, and sculptures of both modern, abstract, and representational styles. To see all of our art treasures, visit our showroom today at 19500 Livernois Avenue in Detroit, Michigan. For more information, call 313-340-0411. Sherwood Forest Art, where art talks to us in a language of its own. Trig Laboratories manufactures premium sexual wellness and consumer health care products and is the parent company of Wet International Incorporated, one of the world's best-selling lines of personal lubricants and intimacy products. We carry a large variety of personal and flavored lubricants, flavored heating massage lotions, and aromatherapy heating massage oils. Whether you need a little or a lot, Wet has you covered. Our line of high-quality, innovative, and unique products are formulated using only the finest ingredients at our FDA-approved facility, meeting the strictest manufacturing standards. Wet is available worldwide at specialty stores and online retailers and at pharmacies nationwide. For more information or to find a retailer near you, Log on to www.stayswetlonger.com. Trig Laboratories. We create fun, quality, trusted products to innovate your intimacy.
All right, and we are back. If you're just tuning in and want to come in on the conversation, please feel free to call 347-205-9183. That's 347-205-9183. All right. Now, we're going to get into this, and I have a call to come and bring here. I think it, this is you who I think it is, all these ones it's, as an anonymous call. Come on up in here, baby, as soon as your mic opens for me. There we go. Hey, you're on the air, baby. Hello. Hello. All right, you left me holding. Okay, I'm going to close your mic back out. And then we're going to go here. Let me find this little uh, tidbit that I want to read for you because what is happening, uh, this here, I'm really concerned about this whole uh, Virginia thing. Okay. And the reason why I'm concerned about it is because we, I just don't believe that the children are going through all of these particular shenanigans to try to keep folks from medical coverage, uh, housing. Uh, you could possibly lose your children all because they, they're they claiming um, it's a it's a it's a, against the the morality the, the moral majority or whatever this is. I want to get the right wording for it. Um, and I'm 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 having a hard time accepting this as some kind of of something. You know, I, 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 they want to absolutely make this a law, and. It is it is absolutely ridiculous. I'm trying to find that there's a there's an online um, there's an um, a petition that's going around that they want to get everybody to sign, and I haven't signed it yet because some of these online petitions I'm not sure if they're valid enough because if this is happening for the state of uh, Virginia. Uh, I'm not understanding how my signature on this is going to help because I'm here in Atlanta, you know. But but maybe they just needed to to um, to collect the signatures so that they can have a, a decent presentation when they go to uh, the, the the state representative or the senator or whatever this is. But I'm having a hard time with this one, children. So you guys come up and tell me what what it is that you feel about that because um, it doesn't make sense. It is not, not, not making any sense. How does that make any sense? And then we're going through a phase now to where, you know, this particular tax season, I believe they're talking about taxing those who were not signed up through the Affordable Health Care Act and carrying on if you still don't have insurance. They are looking to uh, to to penalize you, you know, through your taxes and things. I'm not exactly sure how that is going to work in this particular predicament. But then again, for those who don't have money, for those who are on public assistance or whatever, they won't be filing taxes anyway, you know. But I'm not sure if that means that their benefits will get cut or whatever. So that's a very interesting conundrum. Here, uh, 404519. 404519. You, let's see, come on, Mike. You're about to pop on it. There we go. Your mic is open. Hey, baby, you're dishing tea with Big Meech. What's going on? What's going on? Um, I called at the right time, evidently. Dig this. If you don't have insurance or you're on public assistance, you should still file your income tax every year. Um, they're about to gear up for housing projects, health care, um, uh, income subsidies, and all those things, but it's based on your income tax. Oh. Oh, exactly. I got the information from Mr. Stephen Adams. Um, they oh. have housing 
they have projects right here where the people can't get their houses because they don't they haven't done their work. Um, you got to file taxes. You got to go back and file your income taxes for the last three years. And it's really not so much based on income. It's it, it's um, subsidy housing. So. Oh. And then the health care, the way the health care is working, um, and I just looked at it, but because of my situation medically, I don't need it. Um, but right. uh, you can uh, – what is it? What is it? It's a, it's a, a, a program that actually helps you find the, the um, health care that's best for you, and they do it for you for free. Oh, wow. Um, okay. They're trying to get everybody – Everybody covered. Um, you have until it was supposed to be until the seventh of this month, but it's extended. It's extended. Okay. So other things that you can do, um, but they deal with uh, pre-existing conditions. You don't have to mm-hmm. wait if you have a situation um, and other things. There's a lot of benefits to this new program, and we need to hurry up and, and get it before the Republicans stop it. Right, right, because they're trying to go up in here, and uh, they're trying to say that there's no money in the budget. And every time I hear that, Mm -hmm. you know, this is going to cost too much, this is going to cost too much. And yet every time, you know, we get one of these little Dateline or Nightline kind of shows, and you see see how frivolous they're spending money. Right, exactly. You know, on some of these old stupid ass research and development projects that have nothing to do with nothing. You know, to sit down there and give you a study on how many left handed children, you know, write with you know, when they pick up a pencil, they pick it up with the forefinger and the the index finger and the damn thumb. That's stupid. It's dumb as hell. You know, Right, uh, just out of the blue, you know, they just they they have these particular studies going on, and it makes no sense to anyone. You know, who does it benefit? I mean, who exactly does it benefit? Is the question. That's the hard part. It doesn't benefit. It with benefit all- I'm gonna tell you, when they have these old stupid ass little studies, honey, it doesn't do nothing but benefit the market. It's the mm-hmm. marketplace because now they can then have found a demographic. Right. But they're trying, know, to pimp, so, they're trying to pimp everybody for the little bit of money that they have, and it's not exactly. a good thing. Exactly. Because, you know, they want you to save and carry on, but here, there's, there's no way to save if every time I'm turning around, honey, this is costing me this, and, oh, I got to pay a premium on that. Mm, come you on. Know, I, wait, you know what? And I'm, oh, because when I think about that, it just dawned on me. I go to use the ATM that is not my bank's ATM to get mm. charged twice for the same money. Exactly. You know, exactly. you get the, the, the $2 fee or the three three ninety five fee. I'm not paying no higher than three ninety five. In fact, I, I shouldn't even pay that. But mm. at the time, I'm, I'm in a bind. If, uh-uh. You pay that mm-hmm. for their bank, and then your bank charges you another damn $2.50 fee. Uh huh. Off the same money. Bullshit. Same money. Well, it, that also can be rectified depending on what credit union you're with. Um, certain credit unions, you don't have to do that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. I, I am with a credit union that doesn't charge me, and because I'm a, considered a senior citizen now, they also give me back any fees I pay. Child, you never made it to senior citizen. Yes, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, bitch, why? I don't pay for money orders. <laughs> I don't pay for shit. <laughs> and if that's what being a senior is, fuck it, I'm a senior. I don't give <laughs> it's, saving, it's saving my black ass money. I'm gagging with a wooden spoon, child. Shut up. Oh. Okay. You got to use what you got to get what you want, honey. Well. Well, now there. Because you ain't got it no more, honey. Okay. I, I ain't got now, that. Stuff. Yeah. What's up? Okay. Okay. Now, here, let me let me, let me me pick your brain on this because you're right here in Atlanta. Okay. And uh, 
This whole thing with them firing the the uh, the Look, fire chief. Looking at it, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Um, I don't. If I play something, is it going to show up on 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 your air? Well, this it is the we're talking about it right now. Yeah, that's that's it should if, if if it's loud enough. Yeah. Okay. That's not coming through. No, that's not coming through. It's not. Uh-uh. Well, um, the mayor is saying that no matter what your orientation is, you come in, you do your shift, you should go home, be able to go home, come to work, do what you do, and not worried about being harassed or discriminated against. I actually appreciate Kasim for his position. Mm-hmm. I also agree with him about firing the man. Because you're okay. taking your own beliefs and putting them in a public forum. Mm-hmm. So you with the fallout. And so all of these people are talking about he should get his job, and blah, 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 but you're going around bashing homosexuals. What, yeah, what does that have to do with your ass putting out fires, huh? Right. Right, and, and I and I got that one hundred. But here, here is my conundrum with that. Okay, I think the problem lies because I think when he wrote the book, I, mm-hmm. I think they say in this story he was passing the books out, or or what? I think he was giving the books away to his, to his fire crew. Exactly. Okay. If that's the case, if that's the case, mm-hmm. then. That is where he he comes into violation, because it's one thing for you to have outside endeavors where, like we all do, we all have lives outside of the job. But now, when you're sitting up there saying, you know, it's one thing to advertise, well, I don't wrote a book, I don't wrote a book. But the view that he has on homosexuality comes from the traditional church that we all know. Now, if you're trying to say that, you know, his personal belief system and how he believes in, in God and carrying on is is the problem, then that's what they need to say. Kasim is saying that wasn't the problem. The problem is that he didn't follow proper protocol about yeah. doing that book. Okay. And for that's that, why, if that's the case, that's why then, I, then I would have to agree with that. You know, as far as him not following the protocol because you've been there for a long time. They want to make this into a whole religious thing, and I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it the way they're trying to sell it. Uh-huh. I'm not buying it the way they're trying to sell it. You know, I didn't necessarily find it offensive because we hear that all the time from those who are staunch, staunch traditionalists in their religious belief systems. At the mm-hmm. same time, you know, when when blacks were fighting fighting the religious system, when they, when the Bible was talking about slaves obey your masters and carrying on, and uh, white folks were telling us that that was our call in life to be slaves because the Bible said so. Uh, you know, that there uh, became a problem for me. So now here we are, because you say you're supposed to be uh, uh, stoned to death or whatever the case is because you're a homosexual. You know, it's the same fight in 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 many regards of, of of trying to say no, this is not literal interpretation and all of that kind of thing. Being on the job, though, one of the things that that's starting to piss me off with with our movement as as LGBT citizens is that we are not letting anybody have their own free mind. It's one thing if the bitches think that way. That's I have never seen nobody mm-hmm. go after the Klansmen. Because of their belief systems, I've never seen nobody go after Jews. I've never seen anybody go after any other uh, any other people because they have their own personal belief system. It's always when it comes down to persons of color, and when you, when we're dealing with race issues, where is a black where black people are involved, and when it comes down to this whole thing about religion, and we talk about gays and this that, and the other, any it, it's always those two things that's under fire, and. Okay. With us as as LGBT folks, sometimes I think we open our mouths too goddamn much, and like and 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 we and we make the fight. It's an unnecessary fight, child. What the hell are we gonna do about the religious children? 
outside of sitting up there showing them, we have to show them how our lives are versus every time they open up their mouths, we're trying to cry foul. And see, what we end up doing is we're stepping on other people's rights or whatever. Now, if, if now mm-hmm. like I said, with this book, because he did not follow proper protocol um, on this and the other, suffering himself, you know, this is a personal endeavor and carrying on. It's just like going to church. I go to church Sunday morning. When I come into work, honey, I'm not going to tell you everything that the pastor has told me um, that we're around the water cooler, and I already know that you believe with me and we got a little rapport. But this is not going to go. I'm going to go to the general manager of, of the comp- company and tell him what to say the Lord because it's right. not the right time. You know what I'm saying? And that there is where I'm having my issue with that is. If you did not follow this fucking protocol the right way, honey, then no. And giving out the books and carrying on like like you should really get to have sermon, right. you know, have court and have a sermon and carrying on, you passing out Bibles at the church, yeah, that's how, cause that's how, I'm, how I envision it when they say he was giving away the book. Right. And, you and know, that's what salvation was because it was, it was given – the way he was giving it out is almost like you bringing spiritual or, or, or spiritual information and pamphlets and booklets and passing them out at work. That mm-hmm. Was, mm-hmm. Oh, wasn't so, and, and I like Kasim because he said it's not necessarily about what he believes is the problem. It's the way he did it, and it was against um, company rules or his job's rules mm-hmm. and regulations. He knew that. But he wanted to go on and pass it out anyway because, he felt he was above the law because he was the boss. The father, right. Mm-hmm. right. And that, if you really listen to it, Kasim is not saying that um, that the book was a wrong thing. He's saying the whole thing was um, just, just the way he did it was against company policy. And I support that. And it, it would be different if Kasim, you know, because if he hadn't have done anything or said anything, then he would have been wrong. You know right. what I'm saying? Right, um, right, right. Hot hell for that. So my thing is, um, I like the fact that he has stood up for something. I'm also looking for this other thing. I don't know if you've seen it about these two guys with the three or four kids, the two black guys here in Atlanta. Yes, I just saw that on Facebook. Ain't that okay. beautiful? Oh, honey, I just made a post about it because the right-wing Republicans and the people that are against gay marriage need to see that. That represents the rights for gay marriage in the most positive way I've ever seen it. And I thought it was just beautiful. Um, Those guys, and and I know other guys that are doing the same thing. Right. Here it is right here. Um, The gay dads whose family photo went viral will now be um, starring in a new commercial. Watch gay dads whose family photo went uh, viral starring this commercial and you push it. But the commercial is awesome if you have not seen it. Oh, God, yeah, that's a sickening piece, honey. I was was very, very moved by that. You were very moved by um, I've been wa- I've been kind of watching them and keeping up with mm-hmm. them, and just the you know because of how they look now, like the photo that they have is the two guys I'm looking at it right now. They're in the bathroom doing the hair at at six in the morning, getting the kids ready for school, right? But they, neither right. one of neither one of them have on shirt. Have a so shirt on, right? The commentary was made that it looks um looks vulgar. Who and the that I have a, I have a baby. Mm-hmm. Come on. It's always, you know what, motherfuckers, and I'm going here because they make my goddamn ass hairs itch with bullshit like that. Oh, it, it looks <laughs> vulgar because, they, see, I'm going to tell you, if they had been a straight couple or a single right. dad or whatever, and he just got his little shirt off or whatever mm-hmm. and carried on, Doing his daughter's hair, they just up there and applauded him because he's doing the he's doing the thing. Oh, we got fathers taking care of their kids, but because oh, no. of the fact that you know that these two men are gay, the first thing you want to cry out, "Oh, that looks vulgar!" Bitch, shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That just it, 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 I I cry foul on that all the damn time because you just got to have something to say. 
That ain't bog in hell. What man? I, my daddy. Well, I, I grew up in a heteroattractional household. My father walked around without his shirt on on a regular. And in his drawers. He was at home. And in his drawers. And in his drawers. Daddy sure, daddy sure did. They, okay, we, cause, yeah, they, we, they didn't have color drawers like that. We were tidy whities baby. I mean, <laughs> or boxers. Or white or boxers. boxers. You know, I, oh, that, I'm so sick of, ooh, that just, oh, it looks vulgar. Shut up. Right. The hell you talking about it looks vulgar, and they sit up there in the mirror doing the baby's hair. And I mean, oh, this, 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 in a regular society, this is, you know, this is just, um, it's, 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 it's everyday stuff. You know what I'm saying? It right. ain't nothing. It ain't nothing to it, and you just like really, really. I mean, y'all making a big deal out of this, baby. Hey, you know, and then you know, there's, there's so much stuff going on in the world, and y'all really concerned about two men braiding hair or combing hair, getting ready to send their kids to school, right? You know, what about if they was teaching the kids how to go blow shit up? <laughs> you know, uh, right? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Yeah. Or go, or go, or go rob the um the pizza lady and get killed. See that? <laughs> right. Right. You know, Which incidentally, we're talking about Atlanta uh-huh. stuff. Basically, just the attitudes that prevail a lot of times around here. We're focused on the wrong shit. Right. I I agree. I totally, you know totally, totally, totally agree. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And then the things that we that we really should be focused on um, and, and, and upset about is why these Republicans then took over, because Obama catching hell right now. But y'all want to complain. I mean, so many people complain about how Obama is treated, but none of them went to the polls. You know what? And after see, you know what? Everybody who claims that they don't want to vote and this, that, and the other, need to go and see the movie Selma. I'm promoting on, that. Baby, come on. I know where you're going. I'm promoting that. I'm promoting mm-hmm. that. I'm promoting that. All, that there is the educational piece, and God help me, for those who are still alive who, who was there through that. Uh, mm-hmm. our, our Congressman John Lewis, you know, he's still alive. And yeah. to know that that was him being depicted in there where he got knocked in his head and carried on, mm-hmm. you know. And all of that to to the the woman that Oprah portrayed, honey, she's still alive, okay. Yeah. And this that now the wheat and hell. As a matter of fact, the whole it was educational for me because I did not know that that first March that Martin turned around. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. So they you know, they, 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 was, they had to go back across. Huh? They had to go back across the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, he turned well, around I, because he was, I he was going to. They was, I, I was like, him. wow. I, I, we got to give Miss Lynn Whitfield, we got to give it up to her because, baby, she played Corrado. <laughs> oh, no, you, that was, uh, that's Miss Thing from, uh, that, that was um, Carmen, the, Carmen Egojo from uh, Sparkle. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, oh. you talking about Lorraine Toussaint, honey. Uh, ooh, who was that Lorraine played? Um, She was, um, she played the mama in Tyler's movie, um, the, the, um, the mama when the girl was getting beat up by, what's his name? Um, the, she wanted him to marry the husband, but they were taking her inheritance, and they had robbed together. Um, what, what is the movie? I can see it, but I can't call it. Um, what, Miss Lynn Whitfield, ain't that her name? Hello, Lynn. Yeah, I'm here. That played Coretta. I thought that was Carmine Goja. I can, I can, no, I got it here on Boot no, I'm, I'm gonna watch it again. Miss Carmen, Miss Carmen from Detroit. That was in. Uh, um, no, no, no. She played in yeah, played. Um, uh, the girls. Um, uh, drink was it? Drink? Sparkle. Um, no, the new uh, Sparkle. She played in Sparkle. Oh no, you know she's from Detroit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, she didn't. No, not she didn't play Coretta, honey. That was Miss Lynn, honey. What is her? I think it's Whitfield. Yeah, Lynn time, Whitfield. I got to look at that. Yeah, it's Miss Lynn Whitfield, baby. She gave that. She gave that. I was so proud of her, and her elegance was just awesome. I did. I I got a chance to see Coretta one time, and Coretta just was the epitome of of a lady. You know what yeah. I'm saying? She was just a lady. She was so flawless, but she wasn't arrogant. She wasn't right. arrogant. She was flawless, honey. And then um, just the whole movie, the depiction of what they went through, baby, the white people had to get out the way when you came out the movie theater. <laughs> right. Because, again, it's one of the – see, you know, when we deal with period pieces, you know, it becomes dangerous because it is, is it becomes one of those kinds of movies where you get pissed off at white folks. Oh, you know. My. And then you and, know that when we had um, the man was doing the um, thing for Oprah about the voting and asking her all that questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You knew they did that at the shoe store on Lee Street. Um, what is the name of that damn store? Um, it's a shoe store, but they did it right in that store. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. But, baby, when she went back and she told him she was prepared, and he asked her how many judges was where and did that, and she spit right. that out. Honey, it, it, it gave me such pause, but it gave me pride in the fact of understanding what our people went through to cast the vote. Exactly, so that their voices can be heard and so that they can have a say-so in everything, you know. Um, and to know that in this day and age that folks just throw it away because they don't get the importance of it. Or they feel as though, see, it's a twofold thing. A lot of folks feel as though it is not, you know, it's not going to make a difference. They're not listening to me. They don't feel as though they're empowered to vote. Those, then you have the other ones who just feel as though, that you know they don't have to because they 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 did you know it's 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 bullshit to them you mm-hmm. know it's bullshit. Then you got that that small percentage who stop voting because of religious preferences. You know Jehovah's Witnesses and carry on don't right. vote because they want to separate church and state. At the same mm-hmm. time with their separation, they're the main ones complaining. Mm-hmm. You know and, and carry on. So just like you know it is. <laughs> In a lot of ways, they are stifling freedom of speech, freedom of choice, um, the right to bear arms. You know, um, the white folks can bear them all day. They don't go to jail like we do. Right. They don't, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, how, here's something that I find to, to, to be a little that way, too, mm-hmm. because the right to bear arms, you uh-huh. know, here we have now with, with folks wanting to have all these their automatic weapons and carrying on, and I get so sick and tired of people trying to tell me guns mm-hmm. don't kill people. People do. Use a mm-hmm. motherfucking lie. Because right. if you didn't have that goddamn gun, motherfucker, this this child would still be here. Because mm-hmm. you decided to buy this damn semi-automatic that's going to whip off 100 rounds in 20 seconds, what the fuck is that? Well, y'all don't hear me. <laughs> you didn't say that get the pump shotgun that's going to sit down there. You didn't even get the little, the little six-shooter revolver, the pow, pow. Okay, you didn't get one of those. You had to go get the three fifty seven Magnum with the semi-automatic, you know, that holds 15,000 rounds in the clip and shit so that when you pull this motherfucking trigger, you can sit down and get 20 rounds off in, t- in 2.5 seconds. That means you're trying to assassinate somebody. As you sit there and sip your tea, Right. Just, I mean, just just all you got to do is spray the room, honey. You ain't, you know, hey. Exactly. But, you know, I, I, and it, it just it, it just really, you know, just puts you in a place where if you didn't know better or had better strength or upbringing, you would think that you were you nothing. Right. You didn't. Um, not at all. Not at all. But a lot of this stuff, right. the way Wing, um, especially with this man, this fire chief, and the way the company, uh, country is responding to 
all of this, honey. But they didn't come back and support a lot of the people that needed to be reinstated for other stuff that they lost their jobs. I understand that. Now, see, here, I'm going to tell you something because, see, for me, I'm, I, this, is, this is saying that something big is about to come down the pipeline because every time something big is about to happen, there's some kind of gay shit that comes up that becomes a smoke screen because they get the religious white children always up in arms. And right now, it's about to take wind because they done fired this man for preaching the word. All he did was write a book, and that's the word, honey. How are you going to come against God? You know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so we got to, this is about to be a big smoke screen now. So they're going to try. They're going to get a doohickey. A doohickey is coming, and you mark my words. Now you, mark, yeah, you mark my words. Something coming. Something well, you coming, know, baby. Something the, is coming. The boys, and the boys we were just talking about, you know, they've got to tell us. They got they finna do a reality show. I just posted it on my page, so you can pull it up and listen to it. Oh, and dig that. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, now I'm going to have to go to that because I need to see that because I want to see what's going to be that versus this one that's called My Husband is Not Gay. Mm. Well, yeah. Honey, you, that's gonna be a mess. It's going to be a mess, you know. That it, it, that that sounds like it's going to be a mess, and it sounds like that whole situation. A lot is, of the gay children who are up in arms about it are it's got, pissed because they feel like this is going to be some kind of play the gay away kind of kind of battle cry. It's gonna be ammunition for the right wing people to say, "See, we don't want this." You see what right. they do to come in, you know, you you know, they come in, they're gonna take the opposite side of it. They're not gonna take the positivity of saying, Well, this is who he is. They're gonna take right. the fact that these faggots do, they they come in and try to act straight and then they infect our women and that's what the message is gonna be behind that. And, okay, right. Mm-hmm. God help us. Okay, mm-hmm. let let me bring in this call up. Mm-hmm. Hello there, caller. Is this who I think it is, Mr. Anonymous, all these ones across the board? Oh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I came to you early. You didn't say nothing. What's going on? Oh, I had to step away for a moment. I had a patient to see. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I, I, I want to change the subject just briefly to the medical field. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates, along with the University of Michigan and others, have come up with a machine there in Africa now that uses human waste, excrement, to turn into water. Yes, I just heard it. Yes. Yes, I just heard that. And this is significant (laughs) because we never know when it might be coming to the United States. Wow. Okay. Uh, Not only does it secrete water, from my understanding, it now is able to separate babies' milk out of their excrement and be re-delivered back into the babies. Excuse me? (laughs) So this is very significant. Uh, this is the first really? Um, really? Another thing, I think we, I, I have to go over this quickly because there's so many new things that have come up in the medical field and what and whatnot. Uh, a big concern now is what's going on in upstate New York, predominantly babies of color and particularly black babies are dying at an alarming rate, right after birth and up to the age of two. Um, this is happening around the Rochester, Syracuse, and all that area. What are they dying from? Well, they're calling it SIDS. At two years old, that's from SIDS. Yes, they're pushing it up to that and even beyond because they really don't know what's happening. It's They say it's stress being delivered from the mother to the baby, and there is... A lot of stress in that area due to the economical conditions, mm-hmm. but their economical conditions are all over the United States. But in up in that 
particular area of New York, it is very bad. You know, and that wow. puts you in the mind of a conspiracy thing. You know, just like they came out when they did HIV. Well, HIV um, drugs, and you can probably support this, that the the number one selling drug is cancer drugs, and number two is HIV and AIDS drugs. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and most yeah, most HIV and AIDS drugs are cancer drugs that didn't work on cancer. That didn't work, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, how many people that we that um, we know died in that process? If you go back to the eighties, seventies, really, right. um, before it was HIV, when it was um, grid and and all of that HTLV three and all of this, it, it just puts you into mind: what are we being tested for now? All right. In one specific area, something ain't right medically. Something I is agree not. wholeheartedly. <clears throat> I I mean, so what? What as, as as a person in the medical field, what do we do? Basically, there's nothing that you can do, or anybody outside of that particular community. Really, we can all stand up and march and all that, but if those particular people do not come out in support of themselves, there's really nothing that can be done. But, but so now they sent a team of people up there mm-hmm. from all over the United States to try mm-hmm. to find out what is going on with that particular cluster of people. Why is this Ooh. so dominant with them and it's not, you know, anywhere else in the United States to the magnitude that it is there? Because they're saying out of the seven to 10,000 babies that are born per year in upstate New York, uh. three, 3,000 of them are dying. Yeah. That's significant. That's very significant. But you look at you look at the economic situation, the housing situation, the, the food situation, everything up there is impoverished. And a lot of those people that are there were put there to do work, community work or whatever they're doing, and there's no opportunities. They're struggling to stay alive, and they're dealing with the medical situation as best they can economically. And so they have to go to public health and deal with a lot of these things, which is generally where, you know, we catch it like they did with the um, the Tuskegee men with the syphilis and all of that kind of stuff. It makes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. I figure with the uh, large medical community presence going up there, that might make a difference as well. Money may be infused into that area since well, it depends. It depends on who's paying them to be there. The universities that are sending them, I'm sure, are paying them some some part of it, and but the it, federal government is infusing money into it. Okay, and I mean, but but they're still dying, right? Yes, because this has evidently just now been caught on to within the last six months or a year, which is okay. a very short period of time, actually. Now, you mark my word, at some point, the pharmaceutical companies are going to come up with something that's outrageous to pay to fix this. And I will probably oh, go myself <laughs> next month. Uh, You're going? I'm going next month myself, yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, a couple oh, it's other it's things. about time for that conference, man. Huh? It's about time for the conference. Last year was in Vegas. Yes. Mm hmm. Well, this year it'll be in New York. Upstate New York. Syracuse, I think it is. Okay. Mm hmm. A couple other things we need to touch on. Number one, Michigan just passed a law about people on public assistance being drug tested. Oh, yeah. I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then. Yesterday, Kwame's thing was heard in appeals court in Cincinnati. And? He he is appealing his conviction. Mm. Went to the court of appeals, and they're going to render an answer within the next month or so. (laughs) He's going to be there. He ain't getting out. I don't think so. Not this time. No, he's not getting out. He, um... No... He had he he had a double edged sword. He could have taken that sword and placed it in the right place and just been the man in the country next to. But I'm gonna tell you something because see, uh, though he's paying for his own actions, 
something in the back of my spirit, honey, is just saying that they were trying to get at Carolyn's ass for the longest. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Between Carolyn and Maxine Waters up there, honey, they ran that damn black caucus. Okay. And, and you know, I'm telling you, I just get a, it's it's just one of those funny little things that's in the back of my neck that said, no, they were trying to come out to Carolyn Cheeks, honey. Well, well, I doubt they'll get her. Her. They said she was up there in Cincinnati in the court listening to the trial or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it was funny when everything started going on and she was still in office, she distanced herself from him. She said, mm-hmm. I don't want no parts of this, and you have to deal with your demons. And I thought that was the most amazing stance that a mother could take because she had to remove her motherhood and deal with her um, political career. And I really mm-hmm. loved her. I loved her for that. Um, if I'm, I'm from Detroit, so I've actually done work with Kwame and just saw the whole presence. And I hate to say it, but he got what he deserved. He got what he deserved, and 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 I I don't think they're gonna overturn it because he's so arrogant with it. His whole thing was like, yeah, I did it, and then all the lies and stuff that he told during the process about the party and this that, and the other. I know people that were at that party. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, mm-hmm. you know, and so, um, of course, you can't talk about it because if you do a suicide, you can't get nothing done. In the same mm-hmm. from a business perspective, ain't nothing happening. Um, and don't feel sorry for him because his arrogance again was like f y'all. You know you gonna leave the you gonna leave the city and go to Texas and get a, a cor- somebody gonna give you a corporate job after you've done the city like you did it. Right. <laughs> and now yeah. Carolyn is working at a think tank there in Washington with dealing with the extraterrestrial. Excuse me. <laughs> they offered they offered her a six figure fast salary to come and work at a think tank for the extraterrestrial. A six figure mm-hmm. salary for a think tank mm-hmm. about extraterrestrial. Mm-hmm. Okay, so have we found any? Have you know? Has it been proven yet, or what? What's I don't <laughs> get it. <laughs> well, that's out of my wheelhouse. So. <laughs> Okay, but my deal is this. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not mad for having a job. Not at all. It's your job. But, baby, can't you slice that six figures for something that is unknown and give it back to the community from which you come that really needs it right now? Oh, she's put her home on the market. Her home is up for sale now. Of course it is. She's leaving the city. Mm-hmm. But she's probably leaving Michigan. <laughs> And then what about this one? Well, here's another thing. I mean, we just got so much to throw out here, but you know the auto show is back here in Detroit. Yes, yes. This is media week, and next week, of course, is open to the public. Mm -hmm. But what about what is going on with these black owners downtown of restaurants and so forth, bars and all that, where they are being selectively uh, given pink notices to give up their businesses? There's a big thing going on about that right now, uh, downtown Detroit, that blacks are just being kicked out from downtown, allegedly. But, well, well, that's nothing new. That's been going on forever. Yeah, but now mm-hmm. it's a little more significant since Detroit is coming back and mm-hmm. all of this new stuff coming into downtown Detroit, mm-hmm. monorail that they've put up down there. and. Mm-hmm. You know, they've opened all these new lofts and everything. You can't get anything downtown Detroit now for under a grand. And then we're talking about a studio. Yeah, exactly. And, but see, and this is even deeper with that, um, the black businesses that they closed are now being given. If you come into the city with a technical company, you get to come in free. You get housing. You get tax base. You get everything. In a prime location. Mm-hmm. You're right. uh, I mean, you don't pay no taxes for a certain amount of years, from what I understand. I've just heard bits and pieces of it. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know. And now, like, if you were a police officer, they're offering you like a hundred thousand dollars if you left the city to come back and work as a police officer, but you get a free home, and you can get loans. Well, you can get grants to fix it to your liking. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean it's it's so much stuff that's going on, and it it is um, Highland Park is white, baby. <laughs> they didn't move. They didn't move all the black folks out of Highland Park. Honey. You got flowers. <laughs> And I'm, <laughs> when I'm, I'm, I'm riding through Holly Park and I'm like, what? All of those buildings that were all Ham, all Hamilton that were all messed up, yeah. they are down putting up lofts and apartments and whatnot. Palmer Park has changed so dramatically. It's back to the old Palmer Park back in the 70s when you could walk the park and there were statues and fish in the lake and you know, okay, right. Ha, ha, you know, yeah. Okay. You know, it, I mean, and on one hand, I'm glad to see those things happen in Detroit. But uh-huh. at another, on the other hand, you're seeing the black people eradicated. They're being pushed out. D- Detroit used to be the one of the biggest cities of black home ownership in the country. Mm-hmm. Not- you and know. Belle Isle is nothing like it used to be. If oh, you yeah. go out there now, you wouldn't even know that's Belle Isle anymore. And, well, you would if you've been going there for years, but everything is different. I was just there, and I was I gagged because I was like, wow. But you give it another six months, once the, once the, um, the white folks have really gotten in, it's going to change because Belle Isle is a gem. It's yeah. a, I mean. A national treasure. Yeah. It is. Right. So it's falling apart. You know, it was featured on um, Person of Interest last night on TV. What? Detroit was the story. And Bell they were Isle. talking about, yeah, they talked about Bell Isle, the Wayne County Building, all the national landmarks uh-huh. in Detroit. It was, a, it was about a terrorist plot, but it was based in Detroit. Wow. Wow. And then... Yeah. Has, Detroit has the largest population of um, uh, Arabic outside of outside of that country. We have the yeah. largest. Dearborn is just full of full of. It's full of, and so. that's where it was particularly based out of Dearborn. Of course, and they of came course. into Detroit and panned around at the you know the treasures that we have here that. The storyline went back to Dearborn. It was it was all about a terrorist thing, yeah. And, but you know what? And, and I've worked with a lot of those guys, and I know a lot of those guys, and they mm-hmm. are they're not involved in that. They're trying to live like we are. There's twelve of them living in a two bedroom apartment in some cases, or in the way they're doing the businesses. You know, they get free taxes for ten years. So one comes over, by gets the, the store or the gas station in their name. And then at his ten years, he sells it to a cousin that just came over. Mm-hmm. Okay, but mm-hmm. you know, um, I know several of those guys with businesses over there, and they talk to you about the way that they do it. Some of them are really good people that are being forced out of their country, but we're looking at them like they over here trying to do something. Right. You know, California is dealing with this big Cambodian population and they yeah. say it is exploding to the magnitude of 50 to 100,000 new Cambodians a year. Uh, wow. who, are still mad, who are still mad about Vietnam. Yeah, they're coming right. over here. All that's over there in the Cambodia area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Vietnamese. And they're mm-hmm. saying that each one of those regions are different and the biggest thing about it now is the gang. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. It is a mess out there in yeah. California. I was just talking to a couple of colleagues from there, and they were saying the hospitals are jammed up with gangs, affiliated violence, and death. It's just it's just a mess. And, and so they, I guess in the region that you go to, it's going to be a, a, a different issue. Yeah. And we're okay. dealing with several different races of people with these issues. But as long as the minorities are killing one another, it's not. You don't hear a lot about it. Now you hear when a police officer kills somebody or the police get killed, but about really focusing on on us fighting us and killing us, it really ain't no. It's nothing. You don't really hear about it like that. You hear about you know somebody got killed or whatever. Um, right across the street, a guy got killed two days, three days ago. 
and two others got shot, and one is going to be on um, colostomy bag for the rest of his life, and the other one can't walk, and one died. And did uh, you see that thing that went viral yesterday where the man got beaten here on Plainview Street by the police? It was in Detroit, but it was a Gross Point cop and a Highland Park cop. Oh, he got whooped. He got whooped. He, I mean, a woman got video of it, and it has gone viral. Mm-hmm. Um, after he was cuffed or something, they were saying allegedly this Gross Point cop was kicking him all in the side and everything, and then the Highland Park cop was punching him in the face. And 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 then if you try to defend it when it actually goes to court, it, the lady might have had it on film, which is a good thing. So they may actually get punished. Well, the Gross Point uh, police chief said that it was justified to kick him while he was on the ground. That's what the, the Gross Point police chief said. That we don't know the whole story. That. He carjacked a woman and her children and all of this, and okay, he had a gun, and he was trying to get at the cop's gun, but the lady was saying, okay, after they cuffed him, they had to do all of this? Exactly. And that's, you know, um, oh, wow, God. I was looking at, they had a thing last year. The man was walking the street with a loaded gun. He had a permit, and the police tried to take his gun, and he said, no, I have the right to bear arms, and he gave it to him. He gave them the whole riot act. And this was in Detroit. It was on Grand River, right near the casino at that gas station. And so um, he said, well, he called for backup, and about five other cops came, and, they, you know, he wasn't threatening. He showed them the gun. He said, but I'm not relinquishing my weapon. And the way he talked to them, they couldn't do anything about it, but maybe they had something for him. <laughs> but he was white. Uh-huh. So, he didn't get the scrutiny that a black man would have got. No. Well, a black man probably wouldn't have been here. Oh, got me. It would have been a mess. It really would have been a mess, and it was not good. It was not good at all. And I just look back at the whole thing, and um, I say to myself, you know, that's one of the reasons I left Michigan, because of a lot of the things that were going on in Michigan. It was no good. Um and people are really, really suffering just from the blatant abuse. And it's not just Detroit. You have it here in Atlanta. You have it in Florida. You, you, I mean, you got it all over the country. I'm glad you said that, blatant. And they're, they're, like you say, it's right in your face. And these grand juries and everything is saying that it's okay. It's okay. When um, the, the uh, mayor came out supporting the guy that they killed, how the police turned on him. And I was like, really? The man was screaming, I can't breathe. <laughs> and you said he choking. And then when they got acquitted of that, they blatantly killed that man. So now they want you to respect the police. And that's not all police officers. It's not. I know that. We just had a thing here in Atlanta where um, the guy was in some county and he needed to go see his son play basketball. He didn't have a car and he was trying to walk to get there, and the police officer took him. Okay. You know that? Not all police officers are bad, but the majority, of they're going to stick together. Mm-mm. They're not going to see their, their um, uh, counterparts uh, go to jail for doing wrong because at some point you know they got to do it. And And – the temperament of a police officer has to be me or you in a lot of situations. I understand that. But they get so blatant now that, you know, they check it out on you if you get stopped for a ticket. Oh, yeah. They check it out on you now if you're walking down the street and don't want to tell them where you're going. And that's and don't, none of their Don't business. mess around and be in the wrong community. If you're from Detroit and you're in Gross Point. <laughs> <laughs> And they stop you for walking. It ain't nothing nice. Mm-hmm. Or if you're out near um, the old basketball stadium, the football stadium um, in Detroit, up Woodward, mm-hmm. you go past eight mile. All bets are off. Driving, walking, crawling, <laughs> whatever. Like you say, unless they know you. you know. Unless they know you. And and sometimes even then they'll flip the script on you, depending on who they're with that day. Mm-hmm. Because all the 
this is happening right up there uh, in Ann Arbor. Oh uh, my God! Okay, Ypsilanti. Um, I, I went to Eastern, so um, I went back to East Ypsilanti during the during Thanksgiving. First, I was just mesmerized at how much it has changed and the campus has changed. Mm-hmm. But then you get there and the attitudes. You know, Eastern used to be a primarily black college. Not anymore. No, I was going to say not anymore. Not anymore. Um, the hot, the campus, it looks white. I hate to say it, but it looks white because, you know, back in the day, Eastern was the hood. But the city of Ipsy, you know, is, is predominantly black. Exactly, it is. So, but they're on the south side of Ipsy. Mm-hmm. You know, they put them on the south side where all the killing and robbing and all of that is going on. Exactly. And the police don't really go over there to patrol too often unless they're called for some kind of domestic situation. But they are always around campus, always. I have two cousins and a, a niece at Eastern right now. And I just look at it, how the housing is, and, I mean, it's it's nice. It's really nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, in, in all of our conversation, in talking about this, where do we stand, when do we stand up and say, I, we're not taking any more of this? And then the, 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 uh, the sentiment in the country right now is kill or be killed. You know, you got people disrespecting police. You know, y'all can't, you can't, you know, y'all sitting in the diner eating, and I, the person that killed my loved one is still on the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the attitude that you're giving me is like, <laughs> oh, that's just another nigga. Well, I think it goes back to the movie Selma and what you all were talking about earlier. The young people really have to get involved. Because oh. old people are too tired or whatever, and you, you've you talked to these young people and tried to explain to them what you did and how you made it through, and you try to show them through history what is going on, but they don't listen. You know, it's a whole new ball game as far as they're concerned. So we need to... The part of that that's really kind of, like, disturbing is that, no, they don't want to listen, but the old heads, don't trust them to to take over. Well, they don't. you got to look at it. They're proving that they're they're incapable or incapable, whatever you want to call it. They are unwilling. Well, I don't I don't know that they're unwilling. I think a lot of them are trying to come do it, but they've got new ideas because a lot of the old ideas don't work. They don't, because a lot of the things that were going on in the movie and film are going on today. And so you got you got young people that are frustrated, and like they were when that move during that time of Selma, those people marched and walked and talked based on their frustration. But it, and they did that, and they were beat, they were uh, watered down, and had dogs put on, and they went through a whole lot to do it. Well, it's not quite as bad as that today, but you still have to be careful about what you say. There's no freedom of speech, really. Exactly. You know, you you can't really come out and say, y'all did this and you need to pay for it because then you're going to be harassed. Yeah. With modern technology, you got people talking about right now how um, it was just on the news with uh, uh, they put on make sure that you give out so many tickets today. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're dealing with stuff like that, or if your community is is verbal and 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 somewhat aggressive about changing policy and and things that are going on, you get a police presence that you never had before that are stopping you in the store checking your ID if you buy beer. Mm-hmm. You know those kind of things, and um, the young kids see it more than we do. You know what I'm saying? Because they look at us as like, oh, they old niggas, they tired, they ain't gonna do nothing. You know, you look at the NAACP doesn't have the presence and the strength that it used to have. No. You know, um, um, you know, right now everything is becoming museums as opposed to points of action, you know. Um, all of the old heads now, you know, John Lewis, thank God, you know, he's in office. But if you look at his record, and no offense, John, you've earned your right to be there. I voted for you. I don't have a problem with you. But at the same time, when's the last time John has done anything significant in office? 
It's been quite some time. <clears throat> you know that. You know, so. Me? I don't know where we're headed. I, I really don't. I, I'm pessimistic now. I, I really am from what I, I from <laughs> the point that I'm standing mm-hmm. and looking from. Uh, it, it's it's not going to be pretty. It's but, already ugly. It, well, and, it's, and it's been ugly for a long time. And I see it as being ugly for much longer. Yeah, much longer. And, I mean, you look at, and that's why Detroit has been abandoned like it's been abandoned. Um, You look at the city council president who was booked. Well, he didn't get booked, but he was on the way to get booked, and he ran off Charles Pugh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And now we got this Jones lady. She's she's got health issues. She... Yeah, but she's she's a stand up and fight diva though. She is, but I don't know how much longer she's going to be able to stand up and fight. I understand her health is diminishing quickly. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, a lot of those new cats in the city council, and and they needed them because the old heads were just old heads. They were Coleman era, Coleman Young era mm-hmm. members. The new members have brought new life. Um, what's the new mayor's name? Um, Dugan. Dugan, Mike Dugan. Mike ran the um the uh hospitals um before that, but he also went to my high school. So um but Mike's record of getting things done is impeccable. Um and you can see the change in Detroit. There's even in the hoods they're starting to put all these new houses in, they're tearing down the old houses, and it's slow, but it's happening. It is happening, and Mike Dugan is a strong supporter of HIV and AIDS programs. Okay. Uh, you know, he works in the community. He's present. He's approachable. Um, unlike Kwame, you couldn't go to Kwame's office. You could make an appointment. He may be there. He may not. It just depended um, pretty much on what was what. But I will say I'm glad to see the changes come to Detroit because Detroit is actually a beautiful city, especially in the spring and winter, not so much for me. Well, you're right. That's why I want to look into getting out of here myself because I'm just, I'm getting too old and it's getting too damn cold and it's freezing here now. I I know I have a 93, my, my, all my primary family is there. I have a 93 year old grandmother still living by herself in Detroit and she just talks about how, you know, they're slow to plow, they're slow to do this, the streets are messed up. Um, and then, you know, along Livernois, they've made that Michigan U thing all up and down Livernois, which is such a hot mess. <laughs> mm-hmm. Say it again. It's a hot mess. But, um, you know, just pray for change. you got to have a, a spiritual belief in something because if you don't, you're, you're going to succumb and you're going to get angry and you're going to want to lash out. And that's what a lot of these kids are doing. They're lashing out because I'm not going to be scared of the police. And that's why they turn to fight them back because the police can be so disrespectful. And just it's just a lot. It's just a lot. And it's not specific to Detroit. Detroit has its own set of issues. Um, St. Louis has its. California has its, Atlanta has its, mm. uh, Alabama. But I must con- it must be a little bit better there than it is here. Because uh, I'm thinking on coming down to that area myself. G- give it me some hope. It, me- it's, it's better, but it, as Northerners, you know, we talk back. And there's still some kind of white sentiment here where they kind of expect you, it comes across that they expect you to say yes, sir, no, ma'am. Mm. And so when you are empowered and you know what you do, it's, I can only speak to that in the medical field. I'm a veteran, so I deal with the VA a lot. Mm-hmm. And dealing with them and seeing how this, some of this stuff goes, the things that programs that they have in Michigan, they don't offer here in Atlanta. And it's a little frustrating because I don't care where I served on active duty, I had to be the same to get out and get a, get a honorable discharge. Mm-hmm. They talk to you any kind of way here. They can, unless they know you crazy. <laughs> then the security show up at every appointment that you have. <laughs> and it, it never was like that for me in this year. Never. Um, but 
you know, you you grow. You you know, you got to give up some things to get some things, and I learned that here. Well, um, I deal with labor and delivery and neonatal more. So, okay. Uh, are you retiring or are you coming to work? Both. Okay. Okay. Well, good for you. Good for you. I may try me- to teach a little bit. There. Where's me? Hmm. Where's me? To? He don't went to sleep. We're taking over the show. <laughs> so you see, now you know he would have came in somewhere, but he done sat up there and gone to sleep. So what's on your mind? Talk to me. Other than this stuff, what else is going on? <sighs> I need to find me a real love. A real love? Mm-hmm. Are you really looking for a love, or are you scrutinizing really hard? I mean, you know, that's a really hot topic. Um, Oh, wow. A couple of weeks ago, I invited a guy here from Toledo, and he caught the bus, and he came to my house. And when he got out of the car to come in the house, he was nothing like he had described himself. Oh, that's what you come across a lot of times, sure. I mean, but I'm not a liar. I don't get that. You know what I'm saying? If I don't ever if fuck with you, you're either. not, or I may not be. You know, there are just as many on the other side of that. So you know. I mean, but yeah, I mean there are, but at the same time, if you everybody claims to be looking for love, so how can you be looking for love lying? I agree. That's a question. I mean, and and nobody can seem to answer it. You can't. No, I'm saying I agree with you. You're absolutely right. I understand that. I mean, how old are you, sir? I'm 56. 56? Yeah. I'm 52. Okay. And being 52 years old, you still get the young kids that come at you looking for a daddy. I got grown kids. I'm not looking for nobody's kids. Um, and, And then you get the grown men that are in our age group that act like the little kids. Oh, I'm glad somebody sees it just like I do. Wow. And, um, you know, again, you're looking, they say they're looking for love, but what you're looking for is a type, another hole or another pole. And it's like, if I don't ever have sex again, I've had my share and some. I don't know about that, but... (laughs) Mm-hmm. We say that, but we 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 still want it. Trust me. I mean, we still want it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I don't want it, but it's not the primary focus anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want somebody that knows how to pay bills. I want somebody that wants something other than a hole or a hole. You know what I'm saying? I want somebody who understands what quality time is. I want somebody that understands what home time is personal time. And we ain't got to be up under each other 24-7. I ain't got to do that. Thank you. You know, do your thing. And when we get together, have an appreciation for being together. <clears throat> but have also have an appreciation <clears throat> for being together with one person as opposed to 20. Mm. <laughs> Say it again. You know, you're in the medical field. Talk about this new thing with the HIV and syphilis combination that kills people in five days. Why do some breaks sound like the screech of an eagle going in for the kill or a cinder block being dragged down the sidewalk? I'm Pep Boys Regional Vice President Tom Ballish, and while all brake systems make some noise, distinct sounds are an indication your system needs checked. Or the next sound could be... The Pep Boys Pros will inspect your entire brake system for free. Now, how does that sound? Plus, if you need new brakes, save up to $60 off Wagner Premium Brake Services now through July 1st. Includes free tire rotation. Only at Pep Boys. Offer after mail-in rebates. See restrictions at PepBoys.com. Sometimes deer like to jaywalk, or a basketball forgets to look both ways before bouncing across the street. Will your tires make every stop? Compare wet braking distance at michelinman.com slash long-lasting performance.